these planks of wood here are what is going to become the mast and the yard and the boom. Doesn't look like much right now, but they're in there. So because of all the uh, Corona stuff, I couldn't really go and get the good wood that I wanted. So I just popped down to the local hardware store. Got some pine. You know, I'm sure it'll be good enough. There's quite a lot of knots in it, but I've got a lot of it. So I'll just have to cut out the knotty sections and just scarf bits together. I can't get an aluminium tube really anymore because that would involve lots of complicated messing around and everything's kind of being uh, locked down here. So building a wooden mast it is. So I have to cut it to the right dimensions. And this is a cross section of the mast before it gets shaped to its final round form. And each of these eight staves is 16 millimeters here and 30 millimeters here. And it has this V-shaped groove cut in the end, so it sort of tessellates in a round direction. I need to get these eight staves out of this wood here. And it's a little bit hard to see, but here's the mast here. Starts off here, 76 millimeters, and then 76, 75, 74, 72, 68, 61, and then finally 53 at the tip. I'll cut out each of these staves and then I'll have to taper the staves from 30 millimeters at the bottom down to 20 millimeters at the top and that will give us the tapering mast there. I'll just cut them to the basic 16 by 30 millimeter and then I can figure out the best way of getting this uh, bird's mouth V groove in there. I've got a couple of ideas. These five meter lengths they're kind of too unwieldy. I think I'm going to have to cut them in half to just deal with them, which will mean potentially more scarf joints, but there's just no way I can use the table saw on a five meter length of wood. I don't have any room in my garage. I'd have to open the front door and, uh, well, I'm not going to do that. Anyway, I'd really need two people, so I guess it's really my only choice. You know what? I've come up with a better idea. I'm going to cut these things with the circular saw instead of the table saw so that I can lay them out on the trestles and I don't have to cut them in half. Because I don't want to do that. It's, mm, not if I can avoid it. Alright, cool. Well, I've got four of these uh, staves cut to 30 mil. We'll now be cut in half to create that 30 by 16. So after these cuts, I will have nine five meter long staves. The extra one is just for extra. I knew it would snap at that knot. I've been doing some prototyping on the mast and I think I've got something that works more or less. I've cut all my mast pieces down there. There's still knots and things in there so I need to uh, cut out the worst knots and scarf things together. Whether or not this mast will end up being uh, strong enough I don't know I guess. I haven't used the best materials so just hoping that uh, the epoxy will hold everything together and it'll be all good. Anyway I've been prototyping. This is the uh, basic cross section of the, of the uh, mast. And this is what I have. So that's just eight uh, short pieces just held together with a rubber band. I cut these pieces to size and then I have a little uh, V groove router bit in here and I've got it set with the guide so it's the right depth and it's uh, right at the edge. So when I run the router down the staves I get a V in them. Yeah they fit together. That's uh, pretty much what the mast will be. I think that's a successful test. I've just been going through this wood and um, sort of trying to snap it at the knots and if it snaps then that's fine. If it doesn't, that's also fine. This bit will snap I think. Looks like a bit of a sad pile, but that's that. Stave pieces have got their scarf cut into the end. I just have to fit them all together. One of them is the full length, but uh, the rest 
will need at least one join in them. Got the staves arranged. Now I just have to finish the scarf joints, glue them together, finish putting the notches in, epoxy the insides, then I'll be ready to put them together. Exciting! They're not quite straight, but I think that once I put them all together, I can sort of force it into alignment. I have an idea as to how to do that. I've sanded down all the glue and all the scarf joints should be all good now. Where's the scarf joint? There's one. Most of them you can't even see uh, and they're perfectly fine. A few, well one here has a little bit of a gap so I'll shove some more glue in there. And a few weren't quite aligned properly so that they went a little bit thin. I think there was just one which went thin. They're pretty much all good. What I need to do now is the tapering of the staves. The tapering of the staves. Sounds like an ancient ritual. It's a bit hard to see here, but for the first 1020 millimeters, the stave width is 30 millimeters. Then 660 mil up, the stave width drops down to 29 and a half millimeters. Then another 660, 29, another 27 and a half, then 26, then 23, then finally 20 at the very tip. I've marked all the points here where the different tapers are, going from the bottom and all the way to the top there. So I was wondering what uh, method I could use to make the taper on these staves. And I'd started marking out on each of them where the taper was going to go and just kind of thinking I could uh, do it on the table saw perhaps or use the uh, planer. But I just came up with a, what I think might be a better idea. I have this uh, flush trim router bit here. What we can do is get a straight edge and clamp it on exactly where the taper needs to go underneath one of the staves then put this in the router and this uh, bearing goes up against that straight edge this trims off the exact amount just up to where that straight edge is all the way to the end so I think that'll work the only disadvantage is that I've already set this router up perfectly for routing the grooves in the edges of the staves but I set it up once so I can set it up again Yeah, I think that's pretty good. Well, I got one of the staves cut to the correct taper now. This one here, you can see, starts off at the top with a thickness of 20, which is pretty much right. Comes down to 23 here. 23.5, that's close enough. And 26. What do we got? 26.13, 27 and a half. Ooh, 26 and a half. This one's a little bit thin. Try to fix that on the other ones. 29. That's supposed to be 29 and that's 27. Ooh, that's a bit thin too. 29 and a half. That's right there. And then 30, 30.7, 30 30.87. 30 so there are just a couple of places where it's a little bit thin. I'll make a note of those. So when I use this as a template to route the other ones, I'll leave it thicker. Now in theory, since I've got one of them routed out, trimming the next one should be more or less as simple as just putting 
this one that I've already done on top of the next one and using it as a guide for the router. So the method of using the router to cut out the mast staves worked okay. My flush cut bit, uh, the bearing on it broke. So I went and got another one. Although I couldn't get an individual one, so I had to get a whole set of bits. Then the bearing broke on that one. So I tried to figure out a different way with the complicated jig on the router and just ended up being a huge pain in the ass and just taking like over an hour to do each stave. So one of my original ideas to do it was on the table saw, but uh, there's not enough room in the garage to do that. So I brought the table saw outside and I've got these two guides here. The staves can just fit under there. It's not trying to push it up in the middle and me having to get my fingers dangerously close to push it back down again because that's what happens. Yeah, I nipped my finger on the table saw. That's the first time that's ever happened to me and it was terrifying. My caution and respect for the table saw has increased a lot. Don't mess with the table saw. Anyway, so I'm drawing where the taper needs to be on the stave and just running it through the table saw. Because there's a bit of pressure on it from the guides, it's pretty easy to, to put through. I got my staves tapered. I've got my router set back up again. Just tested it here. That's what the groove should look like. Just gonna set up all the staves here and just zoop. Then I should be able to try and fit it together. Hmm. The struggle is real. Well, it was a struggle, but here are all the mast staves dry fit together in their proper configuration. Just tie it up with some rope here and Actually, I'm not sure if this is going to be the correct order of the staves. I need to stagger the scarf joints, I think. It's a little bit bendy if I pick it up. But, uh, of course, it's just held together by a few ropes. There's the bottom end. And the much smaller top end. The fit isn't perfect, and I need to uh, have something better to force them together than just this rope. I really want to make sure they're squeezed. So I was thinking I might buy some hose clamps to put around them to like really get them together. But yeah, I need to go through and clean up some of the grooves. They are not perfect and uh, there'll have to be plenty of glue in there actually because in some of the places I messed up a little bit, that'll all be filled. So mast, mast. Let's have another look at that sexy mast. Uh, I think that's probably all we'll have time for this week. Thanks for watching and if you enjoyed, subscribe hit the like button if you want to see when my videos come out they should be a little bit more frequent now due to <laughs> me being at home all the time for coronavirus yeah hit the bell and you'll get notifications anyway thanks for watching bye <laughs>